blow me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity which speak peace to their neighbors but mischief is in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds, and according to the wickedness of their endeavors give them after the work of their hands. Render to them their desert, because they regard not the works of the Lord nor the operation of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. The sin of idolatry led the Most High to cast his people from his presence and exile his people from the promised land. The Most High allowed the kingdom of darkness oppress his people. The Most High gave the heathens permission to take his people into captivity and make slaves of them. The heathens rule over the Israelites until the Israelites humble themselves and repent. And I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. The sin of idolatry is the cause for the twelve tribes of Israel's downfall. Wicked leaders who allowed the kingdom of darkness deceived them, misled the people into idolatry, causing the entire nation to stumble. The Most High reserved harsh judgment for so-called religious leaders, prophets, bishops, pastors, evangelists, and teachers who caused the people of the Most High to stumble. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Many leaders that were anointed over the twelve tribes of Israel would follow the ways of the heathens they live among and rebel against the Most High. The sin of idolatry is the root to the Most High dividing the Israelite nation into two kingdoms. And Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him and rent it in twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces. For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give ten tribes to thee. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, because that they have forsaken me, and have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to do that which is right in mine eyes, and to keep my statutes and my judgments, as did David his father. Albeit, I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince all the days of his life, for David my servant's sake, whom I chose, because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand, and will give it unto thee, even ten tribes. And unto his son will I give one tribe, that David my servant may have a light always before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen me, to put my name there. If Solomon would have listened to the Most High's warning of not taking the strange women for wives, the Most High would not have divided our nation into two kingdoms. Solomon's wives introduced him to the idols of their father's house. Solomon took on the customs of the heathen women he married. Multiple generations later, our generation is paying the price for Solomon's sin of idolatry and disobedience. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, 
which burnt incense, and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. Solomon's iniquities remind me of this generation where many sons of Israel are marrying the strange women and neglecting their duties to their people and communities. Instead of taking from the heathens to build their communities, they rather nest in their enemies' territories, joining forces with their enemies to conspire against their people and themselves. Many sons of Israel do not understand how important their roles are. In addition, many believe the Most High will not hold them accountable. The sons of Israel are being deceived just like our ancestors. The daughters of Zion are following in the sons of Israel's footsteps. The rebellion starts with the head and trickles down until the entire family is affected. That is why the Most High will hold the head accountable. It is time that the sons of Israel stop listening to the workers of iniquity, disguising themselves as woke Hebrew Israelites that are leading them astray through doctrines of devils. The Most High said he's a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers to their children to the third and fourth generation. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. The Most High has zero tolerance for idolaters. The very first commandment from the Most High state, there should be no other gods before him. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. The second commandment is similar to the first. Do not bow down to graven images, nor make any graven images in the likeness of anything to worship. Thou shalt not make thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. The Most High made it clear that he does not want his people to worship nor bow down to idols. The Bible has many scriptures that warn the people of the Most High to flee from idolatry. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. What is the sin of idolatry and what are idols? Many people believe idols are statues or a graven image of a deity people worship. Both of these beliefs are true. However, many things can be an idol. The beast system defined idol as an image or representation of a god used an object of worship. The kingdom of darkness want you to believe an idol is a graven image that is worship. Israelites, an idol can be anything. Do not let the kingdom of darkness deceive you into believing that graven images is the only way the spirit of idolatry enter into your life. Celebrities, husband, wife, Children, job, money, social media, technology, hobbies, unclean spirits, pastors, principalities, all forms of religion, and many other things that consume your life is an idol. Anything that you put above the most high is an idol. For example, if you run to money instead of the most high for help, money is an idol in your life. The scriptures reveal to us that money is an idol. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. The love of money is rampant in this generation. Many people would do anything for money, even rebel against the Most High for a few dollars, just as Judas Iscariot betrayed the Messiah for a few shekels of silver. Then one of the twelve called, Judas Iscariot, one unto the chief priests, and said unto them, What will ye give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they covenanted with him 
or thirty pieces of silver. Israelites are to seek first the kingdom of the Most High and His righteousness. Once we do that, Yah will give us what we need. The Most High will resolve any situations we face. The Most High will not leave us nor forsake us. There is no reason the people of the Most High should rely on the heathens or the kingdom of darkness for anything. It is important that we look to the Most High for what we need. Once we ask the Most High for His help, Yah will use whomever He will to grant us our heart's desire. Israelites, always go to the Most High first. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Yah will not share his glory with idols or his people. The scripture said the Most High would not share his glory with graven images. It is important that Israelites understand you have to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth, in addition with all of your heart. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. The Most High cannot be last nor second. Yah must be first. You must love the Most High more than material wealth, even your own life. Remember, the Most High gave us life. One way to know your love of the Most High is cold, and an idol has dethroned the Most High in your life when you have no desire to seek His face. In addition, the Most High is last. Our ancestors started to sacrifice diseased animals to the Most High, polluting His altar. Israelites were offering their weakest and disease among their flock to the Most High for a sacrifice. This act insulted the Most High. Yah had to remind His people that He was a great king. But cursed be the deceiver, which hath in his flock a male, and voweth, and sacrificeth unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. Israelites, there is no difference from what our ancestors have done by sacrificing the animals they detest with you placing the most high last on your schedule and not consulting him. In addition, going to the heathens for help instead of the most high. Yah is your savior, not the heathens. Remember, the Most High will not share His glory with another. The Most High held our ancestors accountable for polluting His altar with diseased animals. The Most High rejected our ancestors' sacrifices with diseased animals. Israelites, do not put yourself in a position for the Most High to reject your sacrifice. We are to honor the Most High. He is worthy to be praised. We should give Him the first fruit to everything. But ye have profaned it, in that ye say, the table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. Ye said also, Behold, what a weariness is it! And ye have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts, and ye brought that which was torn, and the lame and the sick. Thus ye brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, saith the Lord? Our ancestors had healthy animals to offer the Most High. Instead, they sacrificed the weak and lame animals. Israelites in this generation would wake up on time to go to work. Many would work more than 40 hours per week in the beast system. They would look for quality food to eat, engage in activities that entertain them without complaining, giving the beast system and their flesh the most sacred time of the day. When it comes to their relationship with the Most High, some Israelites will wait until bed to pray. Some Israelites will not pray at all. Some Israelites have not picked up the Bible in years or months to read at least one scripture. Many Israelites neglect their relationship with the Most High. If this is your life, an idol sits on the throne of the Most High in your heart. If you highly esteem the Most High and view Him as a great king, Yah should not be your plan B. Behind every altar that is not erected to the Most High is an idol. An altar is a place where humans in the physical realm connect with disembodied spirits in the spirit realm. There are many different types of altars. The strongest altar are gates. The Bible referenced gates in multiple scriptures. One particular verse is when the Most High said to Abraham that his seed would possess the gates of their enemies. That in blessing I will bless thee 
and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Proverb 31 states that the daughter of Zion that is submitted to the Most High, her husband would be respected in the city gates. Gates are altars. The city where the mother harlot dwell, the Vatican, it has multiple gates. The gates are engraved with images of their idols. Israelites, there are altars erected to the kingdom of darkness and altars built to the Most High. The Most High said any altar that is built to him, he would visit that altar and bring blessings. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy sheep, and thine oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. Israelites, in order to share in the blessings the Most High promised to his people that build altars to him, make sure you are building altars to the Most High. Today your altar is your prayer life, and fasting is your sacrifice. Every altar requires a sacrifice. The workers of iniquity build their altars to their idols they serve and make their sacrifice on the altar to their idols. The scripture said the things which the heathens sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to the Most High. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. The scriptures are being fulfilled. The workers of iniquity are making their sacrifice to their idols in religion. This is why religion is idolatry. The church is home to high-level workers of iniquity. Every church have an altar. Those of us whom the Most High saved out of Christianity can testify to the pastor's altar calls. Many of you know from my previous message was done in the dark that the workers of iniquity serve their idols in the so-called house of the Most High. Because the Most High is not the Elohim being worshipped and served in religion, behind every altar in religion is an idol. It is important for you to know the leaders you place yourself under in religion. What God is behind the altar in your assemblies, church, temple, camps, and other religious institutions. Many people are being deceived in religion. This is why the Most High said to His people to come out of religion. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. The process of humans building altars to the kingdom of darkness to meet with their idols is known as witchcraft. Depending on where you live in this world, witchcraft have many other names. I have said repeatedly on this channel that you cannot have idolatry without witchcraft. They go hand in hand. The beast system has glorified sorcery. Many practice witchcraft unaware. In addition, the spirit of witchcraft is in many Israelite families. Everyone in the awakening should know that our ancestors were stiff-necked. The Most High revealed this in the scriptures. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Many Israelites in this generation keeps the rebellion going. When you are rebellious and disobedient, you invite the spirit of witchcraft into your life. Many Israelites are reaping the repercussion of their rebellion. King Saul lost his kingship for his constant disobedience. The scriptures reveal rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He hath also rejected thee from being king. Witchcraft is idolatry. Israelites, can you discern how our people are not prospering? The kingdom of darkness operate in the lives of Israelites unawares. The kingdom of darkness have every aspect of keeping Israelites oppressed covered. This is why we need the Holy Spirit to help us. In addition, the Most High must draw you to Him. Without the help of the Most High, we will go around in circles, just as our people have been doing for multiple generations. Many of us are exhausted from wandering in the wilderness for over 400 years. The Most High said His people would serve idols in the land of their captivity. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, 
which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. Every Israelite that is trapped in the house of bondage, the church, is serving a God that is made out of man's hands, a God that our ancestors have not known. Every day the scriptures are being fulfilled. Idolatry is at an all-time high in this generation. The beast system make the workers of iniquity who serve idols look prosperous. Satan give his agents fame, power, and money. By giving them such prestige honor in the sight of men, many will replace the most high for worthless idols. Israelites, do not trade your glory for the lesser. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Remember, Satan blessed his disciples as well. Israelites, a person can serve multiple idols, just as the man in the tomb was possessed with legions of unclean spirits. The heathens serve multiple gods. Israelites of today are serving countless idols. The beast system is using celebrities to draw many to the sin of idolatry. If you are a member of a celebrity fandom, you are an idolater. If you cannot live without social media, you are an idolater. If you appoint a human leader or a king over yourself to save you, you are an idolater. If you worship any of these images, you are an idolater. If you made this image your God, you are an idolater. It is very important that you examine yourself to be sure that there are no idols in your life. The spirit of idolatry will creep up on you. The unclean spirit's goal is to remain undetected in your life. You cannot cast out or challenge something you are unaware is affecting you. Israelites, any presence of any idol in your life will replace the most high's help. This is why idolatry is an abomination. Those who practice idolatry are stealing the Most High's glory and giving the praise of the Most High to worthless objects and people that has done nothing to help them. Idols will remove the presence of the Most High out of your life and the wrath of the Most High will be upon you. Yet ye have forsaken me and served other gods, wherefore I will deliver you no more. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. And the children of Israel said unto the Lord, We have sinned. Do thou unto us whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Deliver us only, we pray thee, this day. And they put away the strange gods from among them, and served the Lord. And his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Israelites, it is important that you know what is behind every altar. There are altars built to the kingdom of darkness and altars to the Most High. Satan imitate everything the Most High does. By imitating the Most High, that is how he deceived many. Remember, idols are not only graven images. Anything can be an idol. Do not give the kingdom of darkness the power to dethrone the Most High out of your life. The sin of idolatry will cause the Most High to cast you out of his presence, just as he did with our ancestors. As the descendants of the Israelites, we are being oppressed in the land of our captivity due to our ancestors' iniquities of idolatry. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another god. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. The kingdom of darkness is not worthy of the Most High's position in your life. Idols cannot do a thing for you. They certainly cannot save you. Idols will make your life harder. Do not believe Satan when he makes the life of the workers of iniquity that practice sorcery appear amazing. It's only an illusion. Follow the Most High. Do not forsake our only Savior, the Elohim of Israel. Israelites, put your trust in the Most High, for only He can save us. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings.